Okay, so what I want to talk about is the difference between uh, this method called the disk and washer method versus the shells method. Now, what I really like about disk and washers is it's pretty easy as long as you're dealing with a DX. So pretend for a second I'm dealing with the region bound by the graphs y equals x squared and y equals square root of x. Now, if I was to go and revolve this around the x-axis, it's pretty easy because my two um, rad radiuses, I would have my little radius here, and I would have my big radius here, and I could easily set up this equation in x. The problem is, though, what if I want to do this in y? What if, instead of spinning around x, I want to spin this around y. Now, you can still do this with disks and washers. The issue is you're going to have to set this up so that your radiuses run this way. So I have little r of y, and I have big r of y. And if we can imagine what this solid is going to look like, I'm going to have kind of a mirror image over here. Okay. with a hollow top, okay? And it's going to look like this bowl-shaped thing where each one of my slices at any given moment will be a washer, okay? The problem with doing washers with respect to Y and spinning these representative rectangles around is that I've got to change my functions. I can't leave it as y equals x squared. I'm going to have to say x is equal to the square root of y. And I'm going to have to go over here and change this one and say that x is equal to y squared. And it just makes for a really complicated um, setup of a problem. It's doable. I'm going to go and figure out what my big R of Y is. My big R of Y using right minus left will have to be square root of Y minus zero. And my little R of Y is going to be Y squared minus zero. So it's not too bad because then I can go and set up my volume by saying pi integral from zero I think they intersect at 1, and I can say big R squared minus little r squared. By the way, this really looks like it is a 1. That's not a 1. dy, okay? So this is using washers, okay? So anytime we're revolving something around the y-axis with washers, I end up having to do um, change my functions. Now what you need to understand about the washer method is the washer method is basically taking a representative rectangle, if you will. We're talking about taking this function. Here is the area. Okay. And we're taking this little slice right here, and I'm rotating this slice all the way around. So what's going to happen is that slice that I get is going to result in a washer. And I'm going to have infinitely many washers at every single slice. So if I slice here, I'm going to have a completely different washer. I'm going to have another... washer right here. So I'm having slices, slices that are stacked on top of each other. But there's another way, and that other way is using something called shells. Now in the shell method, I'm not going to orient my rectangles sideways. I'm not going to, I'm going to actually orient them parallel to the thing that I'm rotating around, okay? Now hear me out. My representative rectangle, my slice, is going to be parallel to the thing that I'm rotating it around, okay? I'm going to take this slice, and I'm going to revolve it all the way around, 
okay? Now, if I revolve this slice all the way around, I no longer have a washer. I have a cylinder with a hollow core, okay? Now, say I go to a different place and rotate it all the way around, okay? We unrevolve it. I go to a different place and I rotate it all the way around. I have a completely different cylinder. And I might go to a different place and get different cylinders all along this object. If I stack those cylinders inside each other, each cylinder will make up that volume, okay? Which brings us to our notes. If we imagine for a second, okay, if we imagine that what we want to do Sorry, had to press pause for a second and find my paper. Okay? What I want to do is normally in our disk method we sliced such that we were horizontal. Okay? We were horizontal, and we looked at a cylinder formed, okay, when we did it by disks. But if I want to do it by shells, we're actually going to look at a vertical rectangle, okay, depending on which way we orient things. And what it's going to give us is a hollowed out cylinder or shell, okay. So again, I'm going to pick a spot right here, I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to spin it around. If I spin this rectangle around, I'm going to get a cylinder. Now that cylinder has height and it has a radius. Now imagine if I took my scissors and I cut open this cylinder and I flattened it out. I'm going to flatten it out and get this thin rectangular solid, almost like if I were to have um, a pool noodle and cut it open and flatten it out, okay? So opening it up. How do we find the length of this solid, okay? Well, it's going to give me the circumference of this cylinder, and we find circumference with 2 pi r, okay? Well, let's look at this. This is going to give me my r. This is going to give me my r. So really, this r is the point on the function, okay? Now, my height of this cylinder, my height of this cylinder will be the y value of that function. So height of the solid will be the height of the cylinder. Okay? In other words, we'll call that h of x. My width of my solid is going to be its thickness. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Okay, I know it's a say cylinder. Okay, my thickness of the cylinder. So this side to side measurement right here, this is its thickness. And we're gonna call that dx or delta x. Now what you have to understand is, whereas before we took a slice, um, a slice perpendicular, this slice now is gonna be parallel to the thing we're revolving it around. Okay, now I'm going to be taking slices and getting shell after shell after shell. We call it shells because if you imagine an onion as I peel layers of an onion, if I took a slice right here and spun this around, I'm going to get a completely different shell as a part of this graph. So if you go back to this um, thing I have here, let me, let me hide. Imagine we're stacking this shell upon shell on each other. And the idea is to have 
infinitely many shells. Now, right now, okay, right now, this is currently set up to where I only have a few shells. Let me refresh this. I may have crashed it. Okay, I actually had to reset it. So if we look inside this, you see that each layer is actually a full cylinder at the height shells along this graph. So I've got a shell inside of a shell inside of a shell inside of a shell. And that's completely different from washers because washers is slices side to side of the representative rectangle being revolved around this way. This is a full shell at every revolution. Okay? It's a little bit different. Here, one slice, infinitesimally small slice. When we're dealing with the shell method, though, the shell method has full height of the function, but the shell is the cylinder, okay? So if we go back to our notes, imagine each cylinder we cut open, how would we find the volume of this cylinder? Well, we would need the radius, aka the circumference all the way around, 2 pi r, and then we would need to multiply 2 pi r times its height, its height, 2 pi r height. And then to make it a volume, you need another dimension, so delta x. So when you're picturing this, this length here is the circumference. Imagine as if I took this shell right here, this cylinder, I cut it open and flatten it out. The length of this side is the circumference all the way around, okay? The length of this side is the circumference all the way around, okay? The height corresponds to this height. And then my side to side here is my delta x. So what that brings us to is our formula. If I'm going to do a volume about a vertical axis, meaning I am going to spin something about a vertical axis, then I'm going to do 2 pi area from A to B of my radius times my height times dx. Now, if you're looking at that and thinking, well, I don't understand where that comes from, well, you don't understand where it comes from because it is circumference times height. 2 pi r times height, okay? dx means I have infinitely many shells. If I'm going to revolve something around a horizontal axis, aka this way, I've got 2 pi from c to d, r of y, h of y, dy, okay? Now, it's important that you understand that my radius is the distance between my representative rectangle and my axis and my height is the height or length of that representative rectangle. Now it's good to know that with the disc method when we did discs and washers our rectangle that we spin is always perpendicular to the axis of revolution but when we do a shell method my representative rectangle, that infinitesimally small slice, is always going to be parallel to the x-axis, okay? Um, I think it is really, really easy to use disks about a horizontal axis, and it's easier to use shelves when you're revolving around a vertical axis, okay? So let's do some examples. So set up an integral expression that can be used to find the volume when the region bounded by y equals x squared plus 1 and y equals 0 is rotated about the given axis over the interval 0 to 2. So x squared plus 1. There's x squared plus 1. And it says that between y equals 0 and we want to rotate it from 0 to 2. So here's 2. And that means that the place that I am going to rotate is this right here. Now, I want to spin this around y, okay? Now, if I was going to spin this around y and use disks and washers, in this case, it would be um, a disk problem, okay? I'm going to have to change this in terms of y. What's really cool here, though, is that I don't. 
Now, if I do this using a shell, I'm going to imagine for a second that I take a slice here. Okay, I'm going to take a slice here. Anywhere you choose that slice, that's fine. An infinitesimally small slice. And I'm going to spin that slice and create a shell. If I create a shell at that slice, my shell or cylinder will look like that. Okay, now obviously this cylinder has a radius from here to here. And when we say that radius for a second, that radius is represented by some distance, we'll call that distance x, okay? Now, this cylinder also has a height, a height. Now, that height can be found based on where that cylinder has been constructed. For instance, if I constructed the cylinder here, I'm going to have a slightly different height. If I construct the cylinder here, I'm going to have a slightly different height. So the height is dependent on the function. My height is equal to a y value. And in this case, since my function is y equals x squared plus 1, that is my height. Okay? So for the shell method, shell method says I need 2 pi integral from something to something of my radius times my height times dx, okay? So in this case, I'm going to say 2 pi integral from 0 to 2. My radius is x wherever I am on x. My height is x squared plus 1 dx. You have now set up this volume using shells, okay? Now, if I did the same thing, now revolving around something else. So, still have my function, x squared plus 1, that I'm going to bind from 0 to 2, and have this area right here, okay? Now, what if I rotated this around x equals negative 1? x equals negative 1. So, now I'm going to rotate it around this spot right here. Okay, so we're going to spin around this. Still revolving around a vertical, a vertical axis. Now, I want to pick a spot to set up a rectangle. I could set up my rectangle anywhere. This rectangle, when I say rectangle, I'm talking about this infinitesimally small rectangle right here. If I spin this around this axis, I'm going to get a cylinder... with a radius and a height. A little bit different here. How will my radius look? Well, my radius on the right side is represented by some x value, okay? However far out on x I am on this x-axis. Minus my left side, my left side is sitting at negative 1. So that means my radius can be represented, no matter where I'm at, as x plus 1. So thinking about it as this distance represents x plus another one right there, okay? Now, for my height, my height is determined my height is determined by the function. So h of x is equal to the y value, which in this case is still x squared plus 1. So now I'm ready to set up my volume. Volume is 2 pi integral from 0 to 2. My radius, x plus 1, times my height, x squared plus 1 dx. And I have set up an integral. Not evaluated it because you can do that in your calculator. Okay? So, moving on, I want to do um, another one. It says, I've got the square root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 4. So, here's x equals 4, and, of course, y equals 0, giving me this beautiful area right here, okay? Now, I want to revolve this around the line x equals 7. So this is x equals 4, this is x equals 7. 
and I'm going to spin this around a vertical axis. Now, when I spin this around a vertical axis, you have to understand, if we were to do this using um, washers, if we were to do this using washers, then that is going to make me change my functions and orient everything using Ys. But if I do this using shells, I'm going to pick anywhere, anywhere along this graph, okay? And I'm going to use that as my representative rectangle right here, and I'm going to create a cylinder that would have been formed if I had spun that rectangle, okay? So this cylinder has a height, and it has a radius. Okay, so let's determine what that height and that radius would be, okay? Well, my radius is going to start at some x value right here, okay? And it's going to go all the way to 7. So using kind of this idea of right minus left, the start of the radius at 7 minus some x value. Because remember, I could set up this cylinder anywhere. Like, I could have made my representative rectangle right here, wherever it is. This distance is represented by some x value, meaning I am x units out on the x-axis. Now my height is represented by wherever I am on the function. So whether I'm here or whether I'm here, I'm always going to be square root of x units tall. So that makes my volume equation pretty simple because volume will be 2 pi integral from 0 to 4, just the shaded area of my radius, 7 minus x times my height, square root of x, dx. And you've set up the volume, okay? Now what's really interesting is when you start to do shells um, like this with respect to y. I do not prefer this. I do not want to revolve around a horizontal axis. Shells is easiest when you're revolving around a vertical axis. So here is square root of x, and here is x equals 4, and we're going to revolve this I actually want to erase that and use a better color. Okay, and let's revolve this now around the line y equals 5. Okay, so if I revolve this around the line y equals 5, y equals 5 is going to be sitting up here. Okay, y equals 5 is going to be sitting up here. Um, spinning it this way around this line, this is a problem where I would absolutely say do discs and washers with. Do washers. This is a washer problem, a classic washer problem. Make your little R, make your big R. Unfortunately, though, if I have to do this using shells, I'm going to show you how much a pain it is. Um, I now need for everything to be in terms of x's. That means x is equal to y squared, and that means that... Um, I'm going to orient a representative slice, a representative rectangle right here. And when I spin this around this line, I'm going to get a cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to get a cylinder. Okay, that's a really terrible cylinder. And that cylinder is going to have a height. We're going to call this height right here. And it's going to have a radius. I'm going to use a different color. Right here. Now, my radius, kind of difficult to do. Top minus bottom. Top is 5. My radius will be at some value of y, however high up I went. Okay? My height is going to be 4, because again, this point is 4, minus x. But again, I can't have it as 4 minus x, and what is x equal? x equals y squared, so 4 minus y squared, okay? 
So what we're going to do is set up our volume. Volume is equal to 2 pi integral from 0 to 2, radius 5 minus y, height 4 minus y squared, dy. Now what I'd encourage you to do is, I'm getting too long in my video, um, there's an example down here, and I want you to try this example on your own, seeing if you can set it up using shells and using disks. Um, it does say disks, but guys, honestly, it's a washer problem. So um, this is gonna be a washer problem using Ys. Okay, so see if you can do it, and then I'd encourage you to go and look at my notes key online and see how you did.